All right. Hey there. So question came to me, how do you evaluate rental properties? So again, I've been in this 15 years, sell a little bit of everything, rental properties, primary and second homes here at the beach. But most of my early days and still a lot of what I do is helping people purchase properties for investment. Okay. Long term, short, short term, excuse me. And um, we've got a simple formula, but basically, instead of trying to put it on the clients to gather all this info, we um, put it all on a spreadsheet. And I'm just going to show you simply, I'm, I'm doing a deeper dive in this later, but I just want to want to show you how we and what we're going to do, whether it be for you, if you're watching and I'm helping you, or if anybody um, is looking for a system to help them kind of keep everything in order, this is how we do it. So I'm going to share our spreadsheet. This thing's evolving, but it gives us a quick snapshot of kind of, okay, here's some properties in that category. How are we comparing them? What's the easy thing to look at to see which one stands out, okay? So I'm going to do one that we did this week. So this is going to sound really obnoxious, but in this particular category, we were looking at Gulf front property up to $10 million. And that sounds nuts, I know, but I want to show you too that it doesn't matter. All price points, whether we're going to 300000 or $10 million, there's formula. And you're going to see some of these rental numbers. It's all an equation, right? It's what we're looking for. So here's what we do. We love to put the MLS numbers over here on the left for future use. Address is here. Price. Price per square foot. Total square feet, just so you have that rhythm to compare. Okay. All right. If something's renting better, what's, what's making this one stand out? That seems crazy. So bedrooms and baths. Um, gross rental. This is a key one I'll get back to in a minute. Annual HOA dues, if there are any. Property tax, gross return. I'll talk about this in a minute. Is it furnished? And then some additional notes, okay? And these additional notes are good, like plans for kitchen and bathroom remodel, never been on a rental. Man, that's a key topic. So let me just kind of go through these on these interesting different properties. All the while, we drop a link here. So at any time, the client can click on that link and view everything. Here's the nice thing about these spreadsheets. We can just add and subtract as we go. If we're looking at this list and the client goes back and goes, let's drop these, I'll drop it and add something else. And we've got a running list. I don't care if it takes six months or a year for everybody to find the right property. We can just go as we go. All right. So let's break down a couple of key things. Obviously price and all that stuff's easy. Price per square foot. Price per square foot is just to, just so you know, I mean, that's going to be more of a comp conversation. It's not really for, you know, what we're doing. It's just for you to be aware. Wow. They're really at like this one in particular asking $3,200 a foot. Okay. Like that's look at this. I mean, that's a lot of these other ones, 17, 18, this one, 800. So just depends on the area. These are very different areas. This goes in this particular case, destined to some of the most extreme expensive parts of 30A. All right, so let's go talk about gross rental. Um, this is not accounting for any kind of management fee. And we even put in here, all gross rental amounts are based on gross rental income projections. I do try to get actual rental income. What we're pro provided a lot of times is, especially on new construction, is projections. And they run at much less comps, but we help you dive into whether that seems realistic or not. Or if one seems really out of whack compared to the others, is that projection just way off? So I like for these to be actual rental performance, all right? But it's gross. It's not taking into account management fee. Management fees can vary. I tell clients to assume 25% as a management fee from a management company. That being said, it's a competitive marketplace. You may be able to negotiate lower, especially on some of these high volume homes. Don't know that. The different offerings. I'm not trying to be the rental company and what they stand for and what they offer with their management fee. That's why I want to go through gross. If you get less or want to negotiate that, fine, but we're going to stay gross. Annual HOA fees. I'm doing this because I want to try, I'm trying to get you to a net. I'm trying to get you to a gross return. I'm trying to take away, okay, you got the gross rental. What are the annual HOA fees? And then what's the property tax? So what I'm trying to do is back out some of these expenses we know are coming. What I do, what is missing from here is insurance. All right. And we'll get into that in a minute. But I, I just want the, the, the point of this spreadsheet is to keep the comparison on all the properties equal. I'm not going to give one that's got the insurance taken out and one that's not. I want these categories just so that we can weigh a gross return. So basically what I'm doing with this gross return is I'm taking the, the purchase price and the rental income. 
So I'm taking the rental income, subtracting out expenses that we have on HOA and property tax, and then relating that to the purchase price to get the gross return percentage. So basically what I'm saying is, what percentage of the income minus the expenses is it to the purchase price? Does that make sense? So if it's a million dollar home and it's doing 100,000, that will be 10%, which will be a home run down here. But let's look at some of these percentages. So the lowest price home I have here is at 4.9 million. The gross return based on those factors that we talked about is 5.81%. Okay, that's gross return. So that you know that's not your net net. Still got insurance and we got a management fee. But for comparative purposes, the gross return is 5.8%. All right, now what stands out here? Nine. 9.8%. Now, what's funny about this one is um, it's one of our higher price ones. That's 6.9. But look at this gross rental on this one. $710,000 in gross rental. That is actual rental, guys. It stands out big time right here. Look at that. Now, why? Why in the world is that house doing $710,000 compared to three, two? So what I like to do in a snapshot, the fun thing about this grid, boom. 11 bedrooms, 10 baths. So it's one of the highest prices, 6.9. Look at the property tax, 34,000. No HOA fee, so we don't have an expense there, but 710 is a monster number. But if you look down through the category, the reason I like doing this is like, okay, seven, four, five, 11, six, five, seven. So that one stands out. So you're looking in, if you freely got the money up to 10 million and say, look, based on what that one's doing, and that square footage houses 11, price per square foot looks good. Before management fees, before insurance, we'll, we'll obviously check those things. But as a on a broad, boy, that one sticks out. The, the closest thing I have is the six. This one's at 8 million, uh, 525 rental, annual gross rental, which is amazing. 44, 10,000 more property tax. And I think that's what hit, hurt this one, right? Not only are they less here, but look at it. We're talking about six bedrooms versus 11 bedrooms. Look, you may not want a house with 11 bedrooms. There's some personal use involved, but I mean, this is like hotel level. So that's just a broad stroke. And so what we do with that is like, okay, Casey, like that one's at nine. I don't necessarily want to spend 7 million. Can we get something that's close to that? out there in another price point like what's off the, do we need to go off the beach and these are the things that we play with so i guess what i'm trying to say is i love this because just as an outlay before we get into the pretty pictures and condition of the home you can really kind of break it up and see okay based on these factors what's that look like and is anybody standing out as kind of the leader in the clubhouse right now and then we'll peel back the layers on condition do we need to renovate things like that but it helps us categorize these. You can do this on condos in a condo building, up to 100,000, whatever you wanna do. The formula will spit out something and it kind of gives us a guidepost and then we go from there. But I will tell you, I know a lot of you are like, wait a minute, you gotta be making this up 300,000, 500,000, $700,000 on single family homes at the beach, rental income. That is absolutely correct. We actually had, to my knowledge, it's the first year this year that we had a house on the beach in Miramar Beach, Florida, cracked a $1 million in annual gross rental income. So anyway, this is what I do. Just want to show you guys this. If you are interested in a property type, have been looking at something, I'm happy. My team is happy. We can get going for you, plug some stuff in, put it on a list, and then find a strike zone for you guys. We can take it another step further. If you're getting a mortgage, we can kind of calculate that into, okay? And factor that into the percentage to see how it comes out. If there's any questions from this, any comments, feel free. Look, again, these are not exact numbers. These are gross to give us a high level. So I can get as specific as you want to, get as dialed in as you want to. So don't hesitate with anything we can help with.